and then it's it's always going to be the same. If you've got certain files at different sample rates within it, weirdly, sometimes you do. Someone might have recorded a vocal and they want you to patch it on top of the track and things like that. So what sample rate should you be working out or what is the best sample rate? Now, there's loads of different ways of looking at this. Uh, there's not one rule really. So let me run through all the different scenarios that I can think of off the top of my head where you can change sample rate and give you a bit of advice on that. Now, if you're recording and you've got a clean slate and you're going from nothing, you're just recording vocals in and you're doing synths and everything and you're processing, then I would say keep the session at 96 because if you start at 96, Every, the whole process can be done at that higher resolution. If you're a mix engineer and you've been given the tracks and the tracks are at 48 but you know it's going to go to 44 at the end, then what I would do is I would still keep it at 48 the session. Now you want to keep the session at whatever it comes in at when it was recorded. I wouldn't start doing loads of sample rate conversion at that point because the best way to do sample rate conversion is at the end after mastering when you want to then put it out to all the different um, distribution channels. So what I'd suggest is trying to keep it at the sample rate that it comes in at as a mix engineer. And then it's, it's always going to be the same. If you've got certain files at different sample rates within it, weirdly, sometimes you do. Someone might have recorded a vocal and they want you to patch it on top of the track, things like that. Then I would take the upper sample rate and I would upsample things to that. I'd, I'm, rather, I'm more inclined to upsample than downsample. Now, a lot of the reason why sometimes as a mastering engineer, and I know mix engineers do this too, is they'll upsample to 96 is because certain plugins are going to work better at 96 because they upsample internally or oversample. And so then what happens is you'd be better off just going in at that rate because this, this, it's not going to do its own internal upsampling and it's going to make the plugin sound better and, um, and be a lot more high def. So um, I would say try and keep things as high end as you can. When you're a mastering engineer, you've got tracks coming in at all different sample rates for a session. Same thing applies for me. I like to keep things at what they come in at, ideally, but if, they, if I get one track that's 96, one track that's 48, one track that's 44, I'm more likely to upsample them all to 96 and do the whole session at 96 because what it means is I can go out of my converters through the equipment at high resolution and then I can capture again at 96. Now, sometimes if I'm going through the equipment, um, I might capture at 44.1, but that's only if I'm not using any limiting or in-the-box stuff afterwards. So most of the time, I'm going to keep it at 96 because I'm a hybrid engineer and I like to use some EQs and, and limiters and stuff in the box after it's come out of my analog chain. After that, what I do uh, is I need to then present that track to Spotify, uh, YouTube, all these different places. What I normally do is I will downsample from 96 to 44.1 majority of the time to 44.1 because most people want that format and there's the only people that I do a lot of 48 for is people that are working in production music or tv uh, and film so they want things at 48k and so most of the time when I'm dealing with other clients as in uh, record companies and uh, you know general public that are uploading to Spotify and that I would do it at 44k so I would only downsample and I would use, if you haven't got Pyramix and things like that, really super high end sample rate conversion, the best thing you can do is use um, Isotope RX for your sample rate conversion. You can get that now on Splice as a monthly rental thing. So it doesn't have to be super expensive for you to use RX now. So uh, use that for your upsampling and downsampling. Never use the internal one on Pro Tools because it sounds dreadful. And so try and do all your upsampling, downsampling in a dedicated sample rate conversion software. Now, the sample rate conversion software I like is Pyramix or Saracon, which is by Vice. Vice is now becoming more popular because of their plugins, people know that more. So they do a good one called Saracon. But really, Isotope is pretty good. You're not gonna get better than that, really, for um, you know just having a dedicated software. So that's what I would suggest for uh, sample rates.
I hope that's helped you in some way. If you like these kinds of videos, then please subscribe to my channel. I uh, put this kind of content out every day. If you've got anything you'd like me to answer or you've got any questions, then please put those in the comments and uh, let me know any questions you have on sample rate converting or on sample rates in the comments. Like the video and go to streaky.com where I have a newsletter. It's only once a month. It's called the Audio Anorax Newsletter. It's full of uh, you know tips, tricks and uh, giveaways and discounts and stuff that I can't do on YouTube. So go to streaky.com, sign up to the Audio Anorax newsletter. Thanks for watching. I can breathe again now. Goodbye.